Hello family, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Angela and here on this channel, I create beauty, fashion and lifestyle content and particularly for the woman over 40. But this video is for every woman. If you're living in a home, you have a house, you have an apartment, you have a condo, you have a studio. If it is your home, I have some tips for you to get it ready for spring. Now I say spring and, and spring did come to uh, Texas, it's, um, I'm right outside of Dallas. It did come, it was 74 degrees last week and it was beautiful, it was so nice. My, my husband was outside in the yard just kind of doing stuff in the garage and I had the windows up and it was so nice and I was just cleaning, it was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. Two days later, two days later, um, Mother Nature wanted to play games and play tricks for me, play tricks with me me, my wardrobe, my sense of well-being, all of, all of it. Um, right now it is 53 degrees outside and I have a fire going in the fireplace. I love a fire. I love me a good fire in the fireplace, but yeah. Um, but we're going to pretend that mother nature didn't come and then, and, and, and bring us all this joy and just kind of trick us into thinking she was going to be nice and then turned around and hit us in the back and left us on the side of the road for dead. Like. <laughs> Okay, that, that was a bit much. But she did come and play games with us. So it's cold outside right now, but we're gonna pretend that spring, spring is here, or we're gonna get our homes ready because it's, again, it's right around the corner. I know it's gonna warm up again soon. So that being said, is it 10? Wait a minute. Yep, it's 10. <laughs> So that being said, I have 10 tips on how you can refresh your home and get it ready for spring. If you'd like to hear what my 10 tips are, then stay tuned now. Let's get started. So this is my outfit of the day. You all have definitely seen this dress before. It is one of my favorite dresses from Amazon. I love it. It's really, really comfortable. I'm wearing it in a size small. It has a really cute sweetheart neckline and a little bell on the sleeve, but not too bad. It's really nice. It feels very comfortable. This is, I can't remember, it's like a burnt sienna orange. I think I have it in two other colors, but I love it. I could, uh, I could size down to an extra small because it's very fitted, but not so tight that it's uncomfortable. Very, very comfortable. The split is not too high, but I am five, three and a half on petite. So if you're tall, it may be a little taller. On my feet, I have the clear shoes from Zara. I saw these on another influencer. They have a round toe, very, very comfortable. I don't know how many inches they are. I think they're probably three and a half or four inches, but they don't feel like it. They're very, very comfortable. And I love shoes like this when you have on a, a dress because they look new, so it kind of makes your legs look long. If you're petite like me, that's a bonus. So again, this is my outfit of the day and I have on as my scent, Baccarat Rouge 540. I have the perfume on and I also have the lotion. Where's my bottle? Where did I put it back? Yeah, right here. I have the lotion as well. So I'll be smelling beautiful like Baccarat Rouge 540 all day long. So the very first thing you can do to get your home ready for spring is to open up your windows, open up your doors if you have a screen door, open up your closet doors to get that fresh air of spring in, the fresh flowers, just to get all those stale smells out of your homes. See, most of us, because we're in the house all the time, we don't realize that our house kind of has a stale smell, especially if you're the sort of person that doesn't like candles or air fresheners or that sort of thing, then you may have like a, a old stale smell in your house and may not even realize it. You know, I'm a nurse and I've did home health for a while and I would go into people's homes and um, it would smell stale, you, especially elderly patients who, you, who still love to use mothballs. Sometimes the house will smell like mothballs and sometimes it will smell like kitty litter or pets if they have pets. But when you open up the windows and you let that fresh air in, it kind of takes that stale smell out. You can also don't forget to open up your closets because you know it gets stuffy in there sometimes people don't always launder their clothes or their suits or their dresses every time they wear it so you know we spray perfume all over ourselves and sometimes ladies wear maybe 
two or three dressings. They have two or three different perfumes on. They're sticking them back in the closet. And so those smells kind of get stuck in there because there's not air circulating around. So open up your closets, open up your bedroom door, open up your windows as soon as it gets warm enough where it's not gonna be cold, that cold air is not gonna be coming in. And just get your house fresh and clean and smelling like outside. That was a bonus tip. I wrote that down after I had my 10. Now, tip number two is change out your candles if you're a candle person. I am a professed candle addict. I, I love me, I love candles. If I happen to go on Bath and Body Works, <laughs> like I did today, doing research for y'all, you know, I was doing my due diligence and doing proper research for you all to kind of look up the kind of candles that you might want to purchase for spring. Now I can tell you what I love. I This is my, this one right here is my favorite for winter. And it is the mahogany teak wood, intense or regular mahogany teak wood. This smells like a, a, a man, like a man, like a man. <laughs> I probably shouldn't say it. I was going to say, we're family. This smells like a man with chest hair. This smells like a man with a nice thick mustache. This smells like a man with a 401k and some benefits. This smells fantastic. And this one candle, the Intense, you can light this and it'll make your entire house smell like it smells beautiful. But now, we're not talking about this. That's winter. We want some nice, fresh scents, some floral scents, some fruity scents, some clean scents for spring. So net right now, one of my favorite spring scents, especially for the bathroom, or if I'm gonna take a bath, I'm gonna soak in the tub, is this eucalyptus mint. I put this in the bathroom, I light it up before I go into the bathroom, 15, 20 minutes if I'm gonna be in there. and just wanna have me a nice kind of spa day. This smells fantastic. If you wanna know what a, a spa smells like, this is what a spa smells like. Now, one of my other favorite scents from Bath and Body Works is this Cactus Blossom. I love this. I love it. It smells like fruit and flowers, like a in-between scent. It just smells bright and it just smells beautiful. A perfect spring, summer, sp <laughs> a perfect spring and summer scent. Another scent that I love for spring and summer is fresh bamboo and it just smells really clean. It smells green, but it smells really clean. And I just love, it smells like after the rain or not when uh, fresh mold grass, not kind of that green, but it smells green. I just don't know how to explain it to you, but I love, I think it is a beautiful spring and summer scent. And the other scent that I love in spring and summertime is champagne toast. It has a fruity floral scent as well. It's very light, but it's not very heavy. It's not really, really floral. It's not really, really fruity. It's a lighter scent. So if you want your uh, candles to be powerful, this is probably not the one for you, but it gives off a really nice, calming, beautiful scent. Now, I was on the uh, Bath and Body Works looking, you know, again, I was researching for you guys. And just, you know, the day of this video, I'm shooting this video on, What's today? Thursday for Sunday. There's a half off some of their three wick candles. Um, and I got caught up. I got caught up. So, so honey, as you're editing this video, um, I, I'm, I don't know how many candles I purchased. I think it was around 12. I think it was 12. It was, shipping was only $7 though. So I saved us a lot of money in shipping. Um, the candles will be here by the time you get home but they're gonna come in a box and it's gonna be heavy. They're gonna bring it and I'll probably get on to bring it in. You probably won't see it. I'm just gonna take them out the box real fast. <laughs> stuff them in the closet. <laughs> stuff them in the closet so you won't see them. But I told on myself because you gotta edit this video just so you know. Anyway, let me get back to uh, everyone else. Now, tip number three to get your house ready for spring is to get your baseboards clean. Just, just go ahead and get these baseboards clean. Now, my recommendation is for it to be a family affair. If you are living in a house with other people, I think we need to, all of us need to gather together because we all got this house dirty together. We all need to get this house clean together. Make it, uh, tell everybody on Friday, tomorrow morning when we get up, 
we clean this house and then I'm gonna go ahead and have the list. This is what we're doing and this is how I need y'all to help so you don't overwhelm yourself. That's how I'm gonna do it in my house. So tip number three is clean your baseboards. Now the baseboards get so dusty. They get really dusty, especially if you have pets, they get pet hair on them. And you kind of don't think about it. You sweep the floor, you mop the floor. Don't think really about cleaning the baseboards. Mine are very noticeable because they're white and I'm a, I'm a clean fanatic. So I see mine and I clean mine at least once a month, but some people just don't think about it, don't get to it. So go ahead and get those baseboards clean. It's gonna make the entire room feel a lot more cleaner. It is actually going to be a lot more cleaner. When you get them clean, you're gonna realize, oh, you're gonna realize how much cleaner <laughs> the room looks. And it's also gonna make the air a lot more fresh because you don't have all that dust that's kind of settled down on the bottom of the walls. The next tip is to vacuum out the lint tray in your dryer. Now, I know we all pull that lint trap up and we take the lint out and throw it away and do whatever we're gonna do with it. And just kind of most people just stuff it back down in there. But if you look down in that hole, there's lint down in there. And in the case of my house, sometimes there are bobby pins or if my husband or son left screws in there, <laughs> in their pockets and they got in the dryer might have fallen down in there but get the vacuum cleaner that long skinny holes put it on the end of there and vacuum out that lint that is down in there a lot of people don't do that i've watched a lot of videos and you know that is truly a fire hazard if it gets stuffed down in there and overstuffed and you don't get it out and you know the dryer gets very hot it could actually catch your dryer <laughs> it could actually catch your little bit it could actually catch your dryer on fire. So make sure you get down in there and vacuum all that excess lint that's down in the lint trap. So this next tip is definitely going to be a family affair unless you're uh, a little bit stronger than I am. And it is pull out your washer and your dryer and clean behind and under your washer and your dryer. You all know if you've ever moved before and you've had to move a washer or dryer, are you not always shocked by the amount of lint and or dirt that is under your washer and your dryer and the amount of lint that is in the back of your dryer around that hose? Listen, we're trying to get all the lint and all the dirt out of the house as much as possible during this spring clean refresh. So pull that washer and that dryer out sweep behind it and get up under it and, and the baseboards behind those are usually really, really dusty. Go ahead and get the mop and clean that up and then get them pushed back up against the wall. We're only doing it once a year, so it's not going to be that bad. You won't have to do it again until next year. I know it is a chore, they are both heavy, but it's gonna help keep your house nice and fresh and nice and clean. All right, yep. Next, we're gonna hit the kitchen. <laughs> this is bad. Next, we're gonna hit the kitchen. Yes, yes, yes. We're gonna go ahead and pull the stove out. Get our husband or get the door, whatever you need to do to get that stove pulled out so we can clean under that stove and on the side of those cabinets beside the stove. You have all seen it. If you've had to replace your stove or if you've had to move and the stove belonged to you, how dirty and greasy it is under the stove and how much grease or grime or dirt or jello or jelly or mustard or what syrup what has spilled down the side of the stove and sometimes grease has spilled down the side of the stove and got on that cabinet and that can truly be a source of smell in your kitchen you might be like this kitchen has a little a little twang to it and maybe not be able to figure out what it is it may be under your stove so go ahead and get that stove pulled out so you can wipe that cabinet on the left that cabinet on the right that back wall and get the baseboards and that floor up under your stove all cleaned out and for me, I'm Clorox and man, I, I Clorox everything. I'll put my hand in it, but I will Clorox and pine saw something to death. But if you go ahead and get that nice and clean, get that grease up, it's really gonna help to make sure your kitchen is smelling fresh and smelling clean. Next, now I didn't even know this until I was watching videos on the best refrigerators to get based on refrigerator repairmen reviews and recommendations. And one of the things they said is the worst habit that people have, and including myself, is they don't clean off the, what do they call them? Um, the condenser coils on the back of the refrigerator. Sometimes they're on the front, sometimes they're on the back. So get over to that refrigerator. We've left the stove. Maybe we need to do this tomorrow. 
and, and, and we've done that stove and that took off all the energy we <laughs> we had. So maybe tomorrow we need to get to the refrigerator or we need to get to the refrigerator and vacuum all that lint off the condenser coil, whether it's in the front or whether it's in the back. And sometimes you may have to take a screw those that little panel off and take that off because there is definitely some lint in there. Based upon the video I was watching, the mechanic said if there is a lot of lint inside the refrigerator coils and, and all in there, it prevents refrigerator from cooling like it's supposed to. So sometimes people have problems with the refrigerator, it's not getting cold, and they'll call the refrigerator repairman. The only thing he's doing is going in there and vacuuming out everything and fixing it. And now you've had to pay a repair bill when all you really had to do was take your vacuum cleaner and vacuum all that lint and dirt out. And while you're there, you might as well go ahead and, and sweep and clean the floor, mop the floor up on the refrigerator before you push it back in. But go ahead and get those coils vacuumed off in the front and in the back. Now, you didn't push the ref <laughs> I know y'all sick of me. Now you done pushed the refrigerator back up against the wall, you've cleaned under it, you got everything vacuumed out. Now we need to get to that freezer. Now if you're like me, my husband said, honey, we need to get this freezer cleaned out. Now I don't even know what's in here. I got you, I got you. He went to work the next day. I had the, I had the cooler. I took everything out of the freezer. I threw away, I don't even know how much stuff I threw away. And then I forgot what's in there. Sometimes stuff gets freezer bitten. I had a few things, a few bags of stuff that had gotten freezer burned. Had to throw that away. Re took everything out cleaned everything with soap and water and a tad bit of Clorox to get the germs and stuff out and put everything back in there neat and clean the way I, or, I'm sorry, put everything back in there, organized everything. Now I know exactly what is in my freezer so I won't be going to the grocery store buying unnecessary food and wasting money. I hate wasting money. I hate throwing away food because there are millions of people in this world who don't have money for food or who go to bed hungry. So I really, really hate wasting food. And so, but I had to throw away food that got freezer burn and so I recommend that you go in your freezer so you can get an inventory of what you have so you're not wasting money buying things that you already have it's stuck in the freezer been there for six months and you're buying it again like a bag of corn didn't even realize you already had some in the freezer you could have used that so go ahead and go through that and throw away things that are expired or have freezer burn that you're no longer using or you no longer want to use and that way you know exactly what's in your freezer and now your freezer is all neat it's clean and it's it's organized. Now my next recommendation is going to be very difficult for some of you. Not my, <laughs> not myself, but um, if you're like my daughter, if you're like my daughter, this, this might be a problem for you, but I have a good solution, a good solution. The recommendation is to bring an air purifying plant into your home, a live plant. I believe, it's my personal belief, I only have live plants in my house um, that it just warms a home and the plants can purify the air. Now I did some research and for those of you who um, like Shadia, who uh, will kill a rock, I found a great plant for you. Now Now this plant is called a snake plant or they call it a mother-in-law's tongue. Why in the world would they say that? I have no clue, maybe, <laughs> maybe because it looks wicked, I don't know but it is very, very easy to take care of. Listen, you only have to water it like once a week. I think if you go two weeks, it's not gonna kill it, but you know you have to go ahead and put some water in it. The problem with this one is you can overwater it so you don't have to worry about it. So if you have a hard time with plants, keeping them alive in your home, this is a very, very easy plant to have. Now this plant belongs to my 17 year old son. Put this down. And I bought that for him when he was 16. So he's had it over a year and it's still alive and kicking. Um, <laughs> you can do it. I believe in you. My husband tells me when I'm trying to do something, honey, I believe in you. I believe in you. They're great to have. They purify the air to take toxins out of the air. They're so good for your home. I know it may be a challenge, I have a green thumb, like my grandmother, Tenny Roof, gave me that green thumb. She passed it on down with these cheekbones. Thank you, Grandma. <laughs> uh, and I have one, two, three, I have plants all over my house, at least 10. You know, this is my fiddle fig, and it's real, and I saw this thing that said you're supposed to shake it to make, makes it stronger. But yeah, this is real. Now, I get all of my plants from wherever, but most of them, I got this from, 
Lowe's, Lowe's or Home Depot. I am got this from Lowe's or Home Depot. All of the plants in my house I get from Lowe's or Home Depot. I'll get the potters from Lowe's or Home Depot. I get the soil and I'll put plants together in a big pot. I just love to mix the, the highs and lows and creating beautiful looks with my plants. But I just, my house just does not feel like a home without a live plant. I don't believe in having um, fake trees. Like a fa mm. That's not me. I, I'm not, I'm not liking anyone who has them, who cannot keep a plant alive, but let's try to, this year, we're gonna make a change. We, we can work with each other. This year, just go ahead and get you one plant, get your snake plant. They're easy. You can put them in sunlight. You can put them in the shade. You don't have to worry about that. Water them once a week, just a little bit. You don't have to worry about overwatering. Well, you do have to worry about overwatering. You don't have to worry about starving them to death or having them not get enough water. They're just easy. Get you a live plant so it can help clean the house and it'll help brighten your home. Now, last but not least, if you know anything about me, my motto is stay ready to keep from getting ready. And this doesn't have to do with your home per se, but it has to do with your car. And I just think we should all think about this. So if you put it on your once a year to-do list, you won't forget. And that is if you purchase one of these, I talked about these a while ago, and it is a battery jumper cable that you put in your car. Now, this one is not the one that I had. This is the one that was in my husband's car and it's bigger than the one I had. So he took mine to put it in his truck and gave me this one. Then I like this one. This is, is really nice. So what you want to do is check and make sure it's charged. Now this particular one, and we got it off Amazon. I think it said it'll go up, give up to 40 charges. Yeah, it'll charge up to 40 times. So I turn it on, you can see here that the light came off. The bag fell on the floor. So it's charged, but you want to make sure this stays charged while it's in your car. So if you have an emergency, you need to use it. If somebody's car is dead or if your car is dead, that it's charged. So you want to make sure you're checking on that. I really like this one. This one is heavy duty and this one is um, safety proof. You know, the old jumper cables that were like, don't make sure they don't touch each other. Well, this one won't shock you if they touch each other. They can touch each other and it's, it's they made it so that it doesn't shock you. And what I like about this one, it has a flashlight on the end. Look at this, let's see. That's that one, that mode, low mode, lower mode. And that's it. Okay, so I like it has a flashlight on the end and it also has a USB port and it has a 12 volt port. So if you have something that has a 12 volt cable, you can plug it into here. Or if you're, you have a phone and you have a cord, you can plug your phone into here and charge your phone. And you can charge this in the house or it comes with um, a cable and a piece that you can charge it in a cigarette lighter if your car still has a cigarette lighter in it, which is really, really nice. And I like that it's really easy to do. It has a negative on the um, black cable on both sides and it has a positive on the red cable on both sides so you don't get confused about which cable goes where. And I think this is perfect. And you really want to stay ready to keep from getting ready. You want to make sure this is charged at all times when it's in your car. So if we ever, whenever we use this, I bring it in the house and I plug it in and I sit my purse right beside it so that if when I get ready to go back at the house again, if I'm going anywhere, I'm looking for my purse, I'll go get my purse and it's sitting right beside it and that's a reminder for me to go ahead and put it back in the car. So you wanna make sure this is charged if you have one in your car and if you don't, you should, you should. Um, and you will think you probably never would have to use this, but I had to use mine twice, twice within the same week. And it was, the, um, there was a lady across the street who stays there, she and her mother stay in the house together and she got up to go somewhere. And she, um, we, I gave her my number, my husband, and I gave her our number in case she needs anything because she has, she's taking care of her, uh, her mother. And so she called me and said, my car won't start. Can you come help me start my car? And of course, of course, my husband was not at home. And of course, my 17 year old son was not at home. My husband was at work, my son was at work. So I had the battery pack and I went over and got her car started. And then the very next day, I guess she didn't leave it charging along, uh, long enough or something was wrong with the car. She called again and we had to go and get it charged. And we, I had to drive her, I didn't drive her. We went to the dealership, took the car in so she can get a new battery. So there was really something wrong with the battery. So I didn't think I would get to use this or I would have to use it, but it does come in handy. I would definitely rather have one in my car than uh, be stuck on the side of the road, especially if my battery goes dead or I really like to be helpful if someone else is stuck on the side of the road and their car can't start. So we have 
this. So if you have one of these, go ahead and get it charged. Well, that's it family. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If any of the things that I talked about are available, I will leave them in the description page. If you don't know how to get the description page, when you see the video on your phone, the title is there, you'll see the little down arrow. You click on that little down arrow and the description page will pop up and you can click on the item if it is listed there. If not, I will also list it on my website, angelamichelle.com. Go to the very top, it'll say YouTube videos. Click on that, click on shop my YouTube videos and you'll see the thumbnail for this video. Click on that and the item will be there and you click on, <laughs> that's a lot of clicking. <laughs> Touch on the item and it'll take you directly to the place where you can purchase it if you'd like to. Now, thank you so much for watching this video. And if you haven't subscribed, I would really, really appreciate if you subscribe to become a part of the Angela Michelle YouTube family. And if you don't want to, uh, I, I, lo I love you anyway, and I appreciate you being here. So no matter where you are in the world, thank you for joining me. Know that you are loved, know that you are meant to be, and know that I really appreciate you, and I want you to have the most blessed, blessed day. Bye-bye.